the airplane ride over to Japan, um, I remember I had laryngitis really bad from singing in the choir at the MTC. And um, I, I couldn't sing and I could barely speak and I asked the elders to give me a blessing and I wasn't even able to get the blessing until we arrived in the mission home because there wasn't a place to go on the airplane or in the airports really to give me a blessing. Met the mission president, that was a great experience. Um, met my first companion. Thankfully she spoke English, but I remember when we went to church my first Sunday, I felt so overwhelmed with the language and my brain started to get really tired and exhausted from listening to Japanese that I just had to not listen to it anymore and I had to just take a break because my brain was just over exhausted. Now those were interesting days but it was great to meet all the missionaries that were there on the island and I felt very welcomed. When I served my mission I served in um, Nago, Urasoe, and Naha. Naga was my first area. It had a lot of hills. Um, as an Okinawa missionary, we had to ride bikes and we had to wear helmets. And so I stuck out like a sore thumb because even though I'm 5'5", five five, in Japan, I'm tall. Plus, we had to ride bikes on dresses, wearing helmets, and then we have a big black name tag, so we really stuck out. Nago was a great area. I really loved it. We saw a lot of success there. My second area was Urasoe. I loved it. Um, wonderful members there. Uh, the church we were meeting in at the time was the second floor of, you know, on top of a business or on top of apartment complex. So it wasn't a, its own chapel that was built by the church. It was another building being used for the chapel. And then my third area was Naha, and that we had two wards. As sisters, we served in both of those wards. So we went to church for six hours on Sunday, and that's where the stake center was. It, ha it was a beautiful church building. Um, in Okinawa, there's one stake, or there was when I was there, there was one stake. And Okinawa, the island of Okinawa, is a beautiful island. It's very tropical, like Hawaii and it's very warm in the summer and it gets a little chilly in the winter but not so much I mean I did not have a coat I only had sweaters I would wear maybe a couple layers of sweaters in the winter time and then you ride around on on your bicycles and um, they tell you to they be, tell you to be sure and bring sunscreen because uh, you're outside in the elements in the summer, in spring and summer time, and you want to be sure and have your sunscreen on. Some missionaries live with, you know, several missionaries. In my mission, I only lived with my companion. We didn't live with multiple sisters, just because of the numbers that we had out at the, t at the time. But a lot of other missionaries live with other missionaries in their apartment, in addition to their companion. For food, they do have McDonald's, in Okinawa. Um, for McDonald's, they call it makuro narudo. And one funny piece of information about McDonald's is when I was as a, out as a missionary, the sisters didn't do this, but the elders would do something called a burger run, where they would, at, at night after they got home for the day for tracting, they'd get on their bikes and head down to McDonald's and look through, search through the dumpsters and pull out the the burgers that were still fresh but were just thrown away because they made excess for the day and they would eat those burgers. And one time some of the elders got in trouble by the police officers because they found them there. It was kind of funny. Don't do that when you go there. The language is a difficult language but missionaries are absolutely blessed with the gift of tongues. So if you put in your effort and you pray consistently, you will get the language and you will be able to do what you are called to do. I do recommend that you br purchase and bring some extra books to study for the language. Um, once you get past your Akai Hone, as we call it, which is the red book you get in the MTC. I don't know if it's still red. Back in the day, that's what we called it. 
So once you get past that book, you're going to want to have some other books to study which are a little more advanced and kind of keep, continue to progress in the language uh, throughout your mission so that you can learn to be more articulate as your mission goes on. One thing about Japan's weather, they have a lot of typhoons. That's Asia's version of hurricanes. So when a typhoon was going to come through, I remember one time the eye went right across where we were. So we had to stay in our apartment for a couple of days. So when those things happen, you're not allowed to leave your apartment. You have to just hunker down and read, read your scriptures, read the ensign, study your Japanese, do all those things that you need to do and make sure you have enough food. Um, those missionaries that always stayed home and followed those rules were always safe. Um, you never want to leave your apartment when it's unsafe like that. So I really had a great experience as a missionary. I f um, one of the things that we did as missionaries, we taught English to people who wanted to learn English. And we would do that as a service project. Because as a missionary, you are required to do service from time to time. So we would use that as an opportunity to share the gospel. People would come and learn English from us, and then they would see the missionaries and how bright and happy they were, and they would know that we were here to spread the gospel, and oftentimes they'd be curious and want to know what it was we were, we were sharing with people. And so we were able to find a lot of investigators that way. Um, so always, it's always best to be to know that people are always watching, and take every opportunity you can to share the gospel. Um, other opportunities were to share the gospel through friends or family members of members or other investigators.